2021 has been lauded as a new start for Formula One. A year where we can make Formula One a lot bigger and better of a show such as improving the aerodynamics so the cars can follow a lot closer than they do now. Also making changes to the power units and also creating a fairer financial structure within Formula 1 for the teams. And now with only a couple months to go until the deadline for the 2021 Formula 1 rules, it looks as though we do have basically the rules confirmed to us. And we now have a general idea as to what 2021 is going to look and also sound like. And in today's video, I'm going to analyse the key elements of what is going to make 2021 hopefully a fresh and new start for Formula 1. To find out what these things are, make sure to check out this video. So first, let's start off with the aerodynamic changes to the cars. Now for 2019 of course they have made alterations to try and improve the following of one car behind another. But it is still nowhere near as good as it really should be to have fun exciting racing. But from what Ross Braun has said it looks as though we have finally a solution to that issue. And from what he has said the solution is ground effect. As he's come out and said that they've been using that to try and help the following of one car behind another by having a car in a wind tunnel and from what he has said they've been able to limit the amount of lost downforce to only five percent from one car following behind another when right now it's 50 percent which is absolutely massive when you think about it and then he goes on to talk about how they used ground effect and how they used it in a certain way to create this better following situation. Now ground effect is something that used to be in Formula 1 a long, long time ago. And you may be asking what is ground effect? Well, I'm going to try and explain it in the best way I can. Back in the mid to late 1970s, Lotus by mistake came up with ground effect for a Formula 1 car as they were actually testing how to make the car better aerodynamically and by mistake came across the ability of using ground effect. But once they learnt what they had found, they then came up with their concept. What they did was shape the underside of the side pods as inverted aerofoils. And this was very important to try and create this effect as now the shape of the floor could accelerate the air passing between the floor of the car and the ground. And that effectively sucked the car more towards the ground and created a lot more downforce. Certainly a lot more than what Formula 1 teams had at the time. And as Lotus were the first to come across this in Formula 1, they used it to great effect in 1978. As in 1978, they dominated the season with clearly the best car on the grid. And it also allowed Mario Andretti to win his only driver's championship in 1978. But by the late 70s and early 80s, Lotus were overtaken when it came to this area of the car. As you had other teams such as Ferrari, Williams and Brabham having success at that time. But by 1983, ground effect effectively was banned. And it was banned mainly for two reasons. One, because the cornering speeds at the time with ground effect were very high and very scary. And we also had some awful accidents in the time of ground effect. And because of the dangerously high speeds in the corners and because of the amount of crashes, they banned ground effect. And we haven't had it in Formula 1 since 1983. But it does look as though for 2021, Ground Effect will make its grand return. And it sure will be interesting to see what the different technical directors at some of the teams can do with their versions of Ground Effect. And it may make Formula 1 more so an aerodynamic formula than an engine formula. Because Formula 1 has been an engine formula since 2014. But there are also going to be differences when it comes to the power units. And they're going to be used in a more exciting way, especially for us, the fans. From what Ross Braun had to say when it comes to the power units, this is what he basically said. Customer teams now will have exactly the same engine as the works teams. 
And he also said from 2021 on, the drivers will be able to control the energy recovery and deployment from their power units. Now you may be thinking, how do the energy recovery systems on an F1 car right now work? And how will they be able to use it in, say, a strategical manner? Well, first, let's start off with how it all works. And we'll first start off with the MGUK. What that does is it converts kinetic energy generated under braking into electricity. And then, of course, when you accelerate, you then deploy the energy you have saved up. But then you also have the MGUH. Now, what that is, is an energy recovery system connected to the turbocharger. It then converts heat energy from the exhaust gases into electrical energy. That can then be used to power the MGUK. And also the MGUH can control, for example, the speed of the turbo. So those two parts of the power unit are vital to how it all works. But for 2021, it is going to be different. Now, I presume for 2021, the driver will be able to select when they recover the energy and when they deploy it in a very similar way to KERS back in the days of the V8s. So really, instead of the systems doing it, now the drivers can control that vital area of their car and use it to attack and defend when racing for position and make the power units a bit more racier than they are currently right now. And then you have the third key element of 2021, which is, of course, cost. And how the costs are going to be cut down within Formula One. Now, the solution they're going for is to standardize plenty of parts, such as the brake ducts, the brake pads, the steering column, the halo, the jack that you see at a pit stop. But the biggest one of all is going to be the gearboxes. And that will make a difference because they are quite expensive for the customer teams to purchase from their works or manufacturer teams. And if they can standardize this, this will make the biggest difference when it comes to cost out of anything that they want to standardize for 2021. And it will hopefully allow those smaller teams to be able to be more aggressive in how they spend money when it comes to developing the car as they won't have to worry about spending money on developing certain parts that will then be standard or spending money on parts that they have to buy from other manufacturers or teams. Now, those are the most important new regulations that we think are coming for 2021. But are they actually going to work? Well, let's start off with the aerodynamics. When it comes to ground effect, I am happy that that is coming back into Formula One. Because if they can, like they say, limit the amount of downforce lost only to 5%, then that is going to be great for Formula 1 and overtaking should be a lot easier than it is. And it will hopefully allow for more technical freedom in that certain area of the car. As Formula 1, as I'm sure you all know, is highly, highly regulated. And quite frankly, is massively overregulated. The only concern I have when it comes to this is that it might make the cars too easy to drive and it won't really present a massive challenge to the drivers even in wet conditions. I mean the cars now are pretty easy to drive and personally I would like to see cars that are hard to drive. So that's my only worry really is that these cars will become way too comfortable to drive. Now when it comes to changes in the power units I think all of that is good. I've always felt that drivers should have more control over what they have in the car. And having them being able to use some sort of curse system, I think would be great. I was a big fan of the curse system because you were never unfairly punished for either having it or not. I was a big fan of the curse system because you could attack and defend. And for me, it's way better than DRS and I'd rather have that than DRS. They also came out and said that they're going to try and make the V6 turbos louder. Now, to be honest, they should be louder, but I don't think it should be one of the most important things that we should have for 2021. As long as we get great racing every season from the top of the field to the bottom, do we really care how it sounds? I mean, for me, it still sounds great. The only thing that could be different is that they are louder. 
So if they do increase the volume, great. But for me, it's not that important. And in regards to cost, I think what they've done is very, very good. Because some of the parts they want standardized, yes, they are important, but not financially massively important. And because smaller teams have enough trouble as it is with their finances, I think standardizing these parts is going to help. Because as I said earlier, they'll be able to focus on actually making improvements to the cars. And maybe that will bring them closer to the top. I guess though when it comes to that, we can only really hope than expect that to happen. But I think it's safe to say there is going to be a new dawn for Formula 1 in 2021. And it is going to be a completely different era where Liberty Media actually make their stamp on the sport. And we can finally see whether Liberty are actually doing what is right to improve the show. Whether it does happen or not until 2021, we can only speculate. And I think the right things are coming into implementation for 2021. Now, 2021 doesn't have to be a 2012-esque season. All it has to do is meet the goals that I think they've clearly set out. Create a Formula 1, for example, where it's possible to overtake. Enable the power units to be less complicated for the fans. And also make sure that all the teams can compete financially on a similar level. And hopefully for 2021, that can be accomplished.